here we will continue with uh, section 1.3.5. We will talk about other terminologies, that is the processes as well as cycles, okay? Take the expansion of oxygen is a piston cylinder device as an example. Suppose I have a device, okay, that's a cylinder and that's a piston here having a volume V, okay? Uh, inside this uh, piston cylinder device is oxygen, okay? Suppose oxygen expands in the device as a fixed temperature so that the volume increased to two times the original. That is, uh, you can uh, schematically draw this to be uh, uh, this one. So, okay, you have a piston here and the volume has been increased to two times the original, okay? Both the start state and end state will be equilibrium state, okay? And the change from the start one to the end one, we call that this as a process, okay? The process, okay? The word path refers to a series of states the process passes through, okay? We usually draw a diagram to describe the process, which indicates the initial and final states, the path, as well as the relationship with the surroundings, okay? And you will see that in the later example about the process diagram. There's one idealized process that's worth studying. It is a quasi-equilibrium process, okay? It refers to a process that when it proceeds, okay? All of the states it passes through are equilibrium states, okay? This can be illustrated more clearly by a counter example, okay? So uh, there's some space here. Let me draw something. Suppose you have a piston cylinder device here, but here I orient it horizontally, okay? Suppose you compress this uh, uh, gas very uh, fast, okay? When the piston starts moving to compress the gas, the molecules near the piston do not have enough time to redistribute themselves, so that the pressure near the piston is higher than that far from a distance due to a larger concentration of gas near the piston, okay? So let me draw. So uh, for example, here would be uh, low pressure, and when you compress it with a very high speed, okay, with a high speed, then near the piston, the molecules will be at a very high concentration in this case, okay? So, uh, that is a low concentration, and here is a high concentration. Okay, so that uh, there will be concentration gradients here, so that there will be pressure difference. And the system is no longer in equilibrium, or more precisely, that will be mechanical equilibrium. Okay, if instead the gas is compressed very slowly, it allows the molecules in the device to redistribute and there will be no pressure gradients inside the gas. Therefore, in this case, the system will be kept in equilibrium throughout the whole process, okay? But uh, although quasi-equilibrium process does not happen in the real world, actually there are two advantages of this idealization. First, many real processes can be approximated to this idealization with almost no error, okay? Secondly, we will show in the following chapters that work producing devices can produce the most work when they are working in a quasi-equilibrium manner. Okay, that means this idealization provides a benchmark for us to see if an actual process is efficient. Okay, in order to visualize the relationship of two thermodynamic properties, a process diagram is usually drawn with the two properties being the coordinates of the diagram. Okay. Typical examples of properties used include a T, P, or V. Okay, V is the volume, or as the specific volume, okay? If the diagram is drawn by using P against V, then the diagram is called PV diagram. For example, okay, okay that is a vertical axis as well as a horizontal axis. If you draw P against V, then this uh, diagram would be called the PV diagram, okay? Okay, a typical example would be something like this, okay? Okay, so this one is called a PV diagram. Okay? 
Note that we cannot describe the system as a single state if non-crossy equilibrium process is happening, okay? Because it's not in the equilibrium, so it is changing in this case. So the process path cannot describe the whole system. In this case, we will use dash line instead of solid line to denote such a process, but you will see this in the later chapters, okay? Another category of process have ISO prefixes, okay? Which means no change, okay? The below table shows some of the properties having ISO as prefixes, okay? We will have this three typical process, that's the isothermal process, isobaric process, and also the isochoric or we call it isometric process, okay? Okay, and at the right column, it has a property that's kept constant during the occurrence of process. For isothermal, because thermal means temperature and ISO means no change, so that the temperature is kept constant. Isobaric process refers to uh, constant pressure. Why? Because bar, okay, bar is actually the unit, one of the units of pressure, okay? And also means no change, so that means constant pressure. And for the third one, that would be isochoric, okay? Uh, this is a little bit special because choric is not a very common word you see, but it actually means volume. And ISO means no change. So again, here means that the specific volume is constant, okay? Well, if the process has the initial state being identical to the final state, then the process is called a cycle, okay? A cycle. Well, before uh, talking about steady flow process, we need to be clear about the difference between steady and uniform. Steady means no change of time. Okay. With many engineering devices can be considered as steady flow devices where they operate for a long time under non-changing conditions. The process occurring inside this kind of device will be called the steady flow process, which is a process where a fluid flow through the device steadily. Although the properties may vary at different locations, the properties do not change with time at a fixed location. More specifically, the mass, volume, and the total energy content inside a control volume remains constant. Steady flow process can be used to describe devices with continuous operation, such as pumps, turbines, heat exchangers, etc. Some cyclic devices, for example compressors, has fluctuating flow at inlet and outlet. Hence, they are not steady. Okay. However, if the fluid properties are changing periodically, the process can still be considered as steady by taking the time average values. This is because we usually consider a long time behavior in instead of very short one. Okay? So that the process would occur for uh, several thousands of periods or more. Okay? So uh, that will be a very brief introduction about uh, processes and cycles. Okay, after